All right. Thank you guys for tuning in to me, Cat Harvey of the Cat Harvey Show. And I'm so excited about the guest today. Before I get into him, I definitely want to wish all the fathers and the mothers out there happy Father's Day coming up. I know it's going to be very huge. People are going out of town, buying gifts, spending time with their kids. Um, but it's a very special holiday to me um, because when I think of this holiday, I think about my grandfather who passed back in 2005. Um, unfortunately, my father wasn't in my life, so my grandfather stepped up to the plate and showed me all the things that a man should um, be to to any woman. So I'm excited today to bring on a guest. He needs no introduction. He's actually been on my show today. If you guys haven't already watched his interview along with the other two members of the, the infamous artistic creative group, D2G, which is drawn together. And basically the group, um, they, they provided a huge platform in the DMV area. I think it's gonna be huge nationwide. And what they do is they allow artists from all of walks of the all over the world, um, from all walks of life to come and to share their, their artistic talents and gifts. I know it's a huge, huge, huge market for them and I see nothing but great things for them. And like I said, they're doing something new, something innovative, something that the DC DMV area definitely needs. It's a lot of creative and talented artists out here and you know i'm i'm always been into art but i didn't know how many people in this area you know don't have somewhere where they can actually showcase it so it's huge and they just had an event this past march so there was about i'd say over 200 people it seemed like it was 500 people in the room down on 7th street a huge huge uh lovely event everything was catered i mean just a six star event i wouldn't even say five star and i'm just so proud of them um like i said you know the three of them they're they're truly, um, they all have hearts of gold. They're very talented and they're all about helping people, you know, and that's what it's about. I mean, how can you get to the next level in life if you don't help somebody else? So big ups to them. So I want to, I want to bring on a gentleman who needs no introduction. He is a father. He is a mogul. He is a creative. He's an artist. Um, he's a son, all of the above, um, but what I love most about him, I mean, he's always winning, but he's always making sure that other people win. Um, he's definitely one of the million and he's the love of my life. So <laughs> please welcome Mr. Rob Douglas. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, I don't know what to say, you know, whenever you hear somebody talk about you, you know, I'm a humble guy, so that means a lot. You know, I'm very humble. I don't know how to take things like that. I, just like to say thank you you know it's a blessing and uh i'm glad to be here well thank you for coming and thank you for coming and it's so funny because i've been thinking about this day for a very long time just to get him by himself i know we got the other guys but just to hear more about him his story i mean if you haven't checked out his instagram and facebook page you definitely want to do that which is at rob douglas art he's amazing he's dope i mean he's like the next picasso salvador dali you know all the greats i think he's he's up there with them and like i said he's going to be opening up uh a new art it's an art studio what are they going yeah. a gallery yeah. that's what's next right that's what's next we're working you know you, you got to stay progressive you know time doesn't wait for anyone i try to stay on the move and keep the dominoes falling that's what's next we're working Gotta stay progressive. You know, time doesn't wait for anyone. I try to stay on the move. Keep the dominoes falling. Okay. So the people want to know, you know, who is Rob Douglas? Sorry, that's such a long and complicated answer. Uh, Robert Douglas is a native Washingtonian, born and raised, uh, lived all over the city and all the boroughs except maybe Southwest. I'm a, I'm a sports junkie. Played basketball coming up. Um, as far as my artistic ability, I really picked that up from my family. You know, growing up, I watched all of my brothers. Um, it's six of us, actually five now. One of my sisters passed away, you know, God rest her soul. I watched all my brothers and sisters, my mom, my aunts, my uncles, all of them were doodling when I was coming up. And that's what I remember most. Uh, them reading comic books and, and drawing a lot of those characters. Uh, I have an uncle named Dorian who was big time into cars, so he would draw cars all the time. And I was just amazed by his ability. So that's where my artistic skill came from. And I picked that up and, uh, you know, pursued that over the years. But um, just a humble soul, 
quiet guy, like to play the background. I don't talk too much. You know, I like to listen. That's where I get all the information from. Um, but that's about it. I'm a real simplistic guy, nothing too fancy. Well, tell people a little bit about your artwork and, you know, what's your favorite piece that you've done thus far? Oh, wow. Um, my artwork. Uh, I actually developed my skill and my talent and the style of drawing with a partner of mine. His name is Gerald Pickering. Uh, we call him Pepper. Shout out to Pepper. Uh, I pretty much learned my style from him. I had been sketching and drawing what I could see. Um, but when I got with this guy, his creativity, you know, coming up in the era that we did, you know, we were fascinated with hustlers. So that's what we drew. That's where our style came from. So that's kind of how my style is based from what I used to draw as a kid. Today, I really like to depict, you know, African-Americans, especially women, as powerful, strong imagery. Um, I see a lot of guys, and for some reason, when it comes to African American art, you know, it's changing, but people feel like we have to paint uh, people of the slavery time. We got to pe uh, paint slaves and things like that. Well, that's not something I'm into. Um, that's what my art is all about. I'm inspired by Basquiat and Jean Michel Basquiat. And, Pablo Picasso, those are my two favorite artists. So I try to pour a little bit of their, you know, influence into my work. So, you know, getting to fathers, what exactly, you know, is a father to you? A father is so many different things. Um, father is a mentor, father is a, a best friend, you know, somebody you can go to when you're down. I know. Uh, I hear a lot of parents say, you know, they're not their kids' friends. Well, I don't necessarily believe in that. Um, my philosophy is different on that. I don't think you have to be, you know, you can't be your friend, your, your kid's friend and discipline them at the same time through respect. When you go a level of respect to your kids, they give it back. Um, but the father's a mentor. He's someone you look up to. He's someone you can go to for answers. He's someone you can go to when you're, when you're weak and you just need that guidance and someone to uh, um, fathers or leaders, um, fathers carry the load of the family. So there's so many different things that fathers are to me. Okay, so I know you study a lot of art and a lot of artists. So out of all the artists, which one do you feel like you can relate the most to? Or which one kind of depicts who you are? Wow. Um, this may be crazy, you know, I, I keep throwing out Picasso. Uh, when I studied his story and I did some research on him and why he was the guy he was, I believe that um, although this guy at a young age could paint like some of the greats, uh, the Rembrandts, the Van Goghs, and some of those guys, he stepped out on a limb and decided to take art to a totally different direction, you know. Um, and that's something I can appreciate because I'm not really one to follow. I don't really stick with the crowds. If anyone that knows me, they know I don't hang in crowds at all. Then I have to be very close to you to hang out with you or hang out in crowds. So um, I like to go left when everybody's going right. His deciding to go left when he could create a cubism in modern art during a time where those things were shunned upon, it was brand new. So in that in that sense, you know, uh, there's really nothing new under the sun when it comes to art. So with what I'm doing with my pieces and my work, I kind of want to go in that direction as well. So who exactly... Uh, is your hero? Shout out to Stan Richards. Stan is telling you, my man, my man Rob is rocking the house. Hey, Stan, what's <laughs> going on, brother? What's going on? Glad you're here, man. Good to see you. To Who, who's your hero? Who's my hero? My mom is my hero. Why? Um, you know, it's it's funny. We're talking about fathers. Um, when it comes to my father, growing up in the city about the streets um you know the ins and outs where to be how to handle it how to move my father told me a lot of that 
Um, he was a hustler. He actually, when I was seven years old, taught me how to shoot dice. Uh, used to hang out on Roll Island Avenue, and it didn't matter no way he went, he got a lot of love. So although he was there, he wasn't there. So when it came to learning how to be a man, I miss those things. But my mom is my hero. She's the, probably the strongest woman I know that I've ever seen. She's my angel. You know, I get a lot of my toughness from her. You know, I've never seen this woman cry. I've only seen her cry maybe twice in my lifetime. So she's my hero. Wow, wow, wow. So who's your top three people you would want to be? I guess dead or alive. And what would you say to them? I got to go with number one. Number one is Jay-Z. Not for the stardom, you know, I mean, that's that's good, but just his story, where he's come from and how he made it, you know. Uh, I think at one point in his life, his father wasn't around, so he had to kind of find his way through life and becoming a man and all this transition in business. So I think we relate on that level. Uh, but just what he's done, his business acumen and, and his success and how he's grown, uh, I'm very interested in that story and very interested in learning from him. I love to be, you know, in the background and just watch how he moves, pick his brain, and see how he's built his empire. Um, second, Louis Farrakhan. Um, over the years, recently, I've been really digging into who we are as a people. And I think he's the strongest representative for who we are as a people. But just his knowledge, his ability to, you know, this guy just stands strong for us on a regular basis. You know, whenever nobody else is standing up for us, this guy's there. Um, and he's, his desire to educate us and teach us who we are is, is big for me. So him, uh, third person in private. Shout out to Corky. I hope I'm saying your name right. <laughs> Corky, what's up? What's up, we babe? Have a lot of people us on we got more work to do. More work to do. <laughs> Being 34, I'm not going to say your real age. Um, but <laughs> what has age taught you? Patience. In regards to life in general. Um, when you're young, you have a tendency to want things right then, right now. And you may not be prepared for it. You may not have that timeline at that particular point. Um, I don't think, I think it's a great thing to want to hustle and, you know, make things come faster than, you know, you, you may think they should. However, life teaches you patience and, you know, God isn't going to give you anything before you're ready. Whether you think you're ready or not, you know, you have to respect the process. Shout out to Stan Richards. He talks about that all the time. Uh, you got to respect the process and just do your part. If you're doing your part and putting in the work, you know, God will put the next step in front of you and maybe 10 more once you open that door. Let's talk about a little bit about your art, you know, with the, um, the D2G uh, platform and so forth, mm -hmm. and customize this, customize yeah. that. And, and on, like I said, one of the most elite places in D.C. <laughs> Quirky says, hell yes. Um, <laughs> Um, but how, how did you move, you know, from ground zero, having an idea and now you're at, you're having your event at one of the most prominent places in DC in less than, you know, three years with over 200 people, all the who's who, um, was there. So how do you, how does somebody move like that? Uh, I'm a Capricorn. So we, we tend to be a little stubborn and want to do everything by ourselves. Couldn't have gotten there without the support of everyone in our network. Um, we built that platform. We understood from the get-go that it wouldn't be successful if we didn't involve other people, if we didn't put other people before ourselves, if we didn't showcase the talent in this city before ourselves. We knew if we could create wins for other people, we would win by default, hence the entire name Drawn Together. That's what it's all about. Drawn Together is not just about artists, it's about coming together and putting resources in places and resources and position to succeed. And I think with that, you know, the word of mouth has been, you know, great. Um, the artists, you know, since we're artists as well, 
you know, we're artist friendly. So where artists may go to another situation and, and, you know, you have somebody trying to rip them off, take percent of commissions from their artwork. We don't operate that way. You know, we put the artists first because we're artists as well. We know we'll win by default. So um, I think that's been our greatest success. We knew if we could do that and hit that off, we'll win by default. Let's talk about pride for a second. A lot of men and women, we have um, pride. So how did you not let pride get in the way as far as you being a man and a father to your kids? I learned a lot about pride when I was young. You know, um, if I could think back, very simple answer or example is, I probably was in elementary school. And uh, I think it was this one girl, she liked me a lot. And people used to talk about her, talk trash about her. So, you know, when people talking trash about people when you're young, you, you stay away from that. Your boy's clowning her. You're like, yeah, I can't make that move. <laughs> so I think I uh, um, you know, be my girlfriend and I was like, no. And then later came around, maybe a year and a half later, she was looking a lot better. So then I wanted to pursue her. Yeah. And I got embarrassed. So and I learned how to keep my, my pride under reins, you know what I mean, and move and just be humble in all situations. But more importantly, when it comes to a lot of situations, I try to put myself in a person's shoes and understand what their needs are, especially if it's someone, you know what I mean? I try to put myself in their shoes, understand what their needs are, and try to meet their needs. And a lot of times my pride goes out the window, my ego goes out the window. Yeah, definitely. So when did you felt like you went from a boy to a man? Me, just let me speak about me. Coming up again, my father was around, but he wasn't around. Uh, he told me the streets, so I knew the streets. I knew how to get in and out and stay out of trouble. But in terms of becoming a man and learning what it meant to be a man, the only thing I knew was being a man meant handling your responsibilities and taking care of your own, which is, I think, is you know, very true. But outside of that, it's, it's a little more than that. Taking care of your own is also taking care of your family and looking out for them when they have needs. Um, having the answers when they may not, if you don't have the answers, being able to point, point that to them. But becoming a, a resource to others and a person of value to others, I think is a big part of becoming a man. But even as I, I state this, you know, um, I'm still learning. You know, uh, as I get older and life teaches me a few things and I get those life lessons, I'm still learning what a man should be. What is your best advice, you know, since you had a child at a young age, I think it was what, 18? 18? 24. 24. So what's your best advice, I guess, to young fathers that's out there? And then also single moms when it comes to deciding uh, who the father of the child should be. I think for the young fathers out there, we got to keep it in perspective, man. Um, you know, there's a natural order to life. You know, we're, we're young, we're babies, young boys, adolescents, teenagers, went to uh, young adulthood and, and you know, full-fledged adulthood. Um, when you're young and you have these kids, it's kind of out of order, you know, and you see a lot of young boys expected to carry themselves as young men and they really haven't experienced life yet at a young age. Just because you're 21, 24, 27 years old, you're mature enough, nor does that age mean you're a man. Um, so for the young men, first off, you gotta know who you are. If you know who you are, then you wouldn't treat some of these women the way you do and you wouldn't say some of the things you say out of your mouth to these women if you know who you are, because when you disrespect them or your kids, you just disrespecting yourself. You disrespect and showing disrespect to your grandparents, your grandfather, your grandmother, the people who put in that work for you to have some type of lifestyle. So I think when you know who you are, things change. You understand your responsibilities. And then when you grow up, you know, you got to step up and, and carry that load. Went through and what you didn't have, you know, that's kind of what made me the man I was to my son. You know, I knew what I didn't have and what I experienced, so I didn't want him to go through the same things. And uh, 
That's what I would say to the young men. You know what you went through. You, you know what it's like in these streets. All this capable of love when it comes to being a black man in this society. You know, you just can't be you because you want to be you. You represent something much more. When I get up every day, I know I represent my family, but I represent something much more. And that's the black community. When people see me, they say a black man. That's true. So, you know, you got to know who you are. When you know yourself, you'll, you'll act different. And what about the women? Same thing for the women. Um, it's a, I, I see sometimes women settling for less. Um, I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's because they don't believe they can get better. But um, I see women selling for less. Um, I just had a conversation with a young lady the other day. She was saying, you know, her boyfriend wants to be a rapper, and that's cool. I'm not. I don't believe in busting anybody's dreams. But it wasn't moving as fast as it should. And he has a, a daughter with this young lady. But he hasn't worked in years. He'll go to a job and quit the job, but you got this responsibility at home. So, ladies, I think you have to recognize what's in front of you, um, who you're dealing with. Um, but that doesn't mean don't make it work if you feel there's something there. But also understand that bashing a man doesn't make anything better. Wow. Um, I think when me and my son's mom separated, you know, my biggest thing was no matter what we go through, I had a conversation. And that's another thing. You guys got to communicate. The arguing and fussing, you got to communicate. But I think when we separated and we realized that we weren't going to work, you know, I had a conversation with her saying that no matter what we go through, you and I personally, that shouldn't have any effect on our son. It's a bigger picture and he's the bigger picture. So whatever issues you and I have, no matter how mad we get, we have arguments. Let's bring it back and let's talk about it. Maybe you need to take a week away or a few days away to talk about it and have a conversation. So we've always had those lines of communication open. So I say to the women, if it's possible, have that line of communication open. And if you're the bigger person, if you believe you're the bigger person, be the bigger person and conduct yourself. But then, you know, I agree with you. But then also you have a lot of um, young men out here who you know, as they say, keep it a thousand or I want you to keep it a hundred with me. But when you do keep it honest and hundred with them, it seems like they're not ready or they can't handle it. So what do you, yeah. what do you say to that? Um, to each his <laughs> own. You know, I can't really speak for anybody else. Um, I just, I can only speak from, you know, my perspective and my philosophy of what I believe, you know, um, is us to be hard. As, as, as kids, you know, and I'm sure we've all seen it, you see parents or moms, they beat their kids and then right after they beat them, they telling them to shut up or, you know, stop that crying. And all of that teaches us is to be hard. That teaches us, you know, we don't really know how to, some of us, again, not all, we don't know how to deal with that emotion. So it comes out in other ways. You see kids and these young men throwing temper tantrums and you know, they want to fight. They, they display all of this anger. They storming out. They breaking things. It's only because they never learn how to deal with that emotion. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They don't know how to have that adult conversation. Is because ready. You know, we get cast into the fire early. Stop that crying. Don't show no emotion. What you crying for? You a punk. You a sucker. We get told all these things. But learning how to deal with those emotions is part of the evolution of becoming a man but we need those mentors we need those mentors those people in our ear and that's another thing you know we have a tendency not to listen to those older than us but they've been there done that before i've been guilty yeah you know they've been there done that before <laughs> you know sometimes we don't trust them because of their you know we may look at our aunts uncles and may not think they're as successful as they should have been but even in losing there, you still, there's still uh, knowledge there. I actually watch, if you, you know, I know you guys are privy to see the behind the scenes of Mr. Rob Douglas, but he's an amazing dad. Um, <laughs> and one of the cutest things I saw was him painting his daughter's toes and her nails, which is so cute uh, while she was sleeping. I mean, just, just being a dad and of course, you know, playing uh, games with his son. 
So talk about the importance of spending time with your kids and also building that relation with them um, while they're young, you know, before they, you know, grow older and, you know, kind of, I don't want to say despise, you know, that parent for not spending time with them, but how do you like keep them, I guess, kind of keep a grip on them before it's too late? 